co-op bureau chief of uh, bureau, bureau chief of the Bureau of Design and Administration, uh, Kansas Department of Transportation. John Taylor, Manager, Transmission Studies and Compliance at Westar Energy Corporation. He's also the treasurer for the Engineering Foundation of Kansas, one of our major sponsors here. We have Craig Connell, uh, Vice President and Director, uh, Corporate Project Management Office with Black and Beach, another one of our sponsors. We have uh, Dean Robert Storm. He is an associate dean at the, Cam or the University of Kansas. <laughs> All right, and our first team here is Jewel.
There are many different professions of engineers in Juul. The material engineers create environmentally friendly appliances for everyday use. Environmental engineers design our alternative energy sources. They also meet the highest lead standards. Solar engineers create our solar farms and help supply our city with power in a very significant way. They make the solar panels attractive, yet very efficient on our buildings. Many mentors helped us with, through our future city experience. Craig Wolf of the Heartland Renewable Energy Society answered our questions about alternative energy options. Tom Nugent and others from George Butler and Associates discussed with us uh, civil engineering careers. Also, Bill Seymour of Meritech Subsurface Business Park explained the advantages of humidity control and quick underground business construction. They all were very helpful. Overall, we think that Jewel is one of the safest and most energy efficient cities in America. We thank you for listening. Thank you, Rob Thorne, University of Kansas. Please identify the different types of engineering used in your city and explain which one is the most critical to its operation. Well, our solar engineers create every one of these solar panels, and these are very efficient because, as shown on our graph, our city uses more than 75% solar energy. The, it's very important, very critical that we have these because without them, we don't be without power. Uh, Don Taylor, uh, Engineers Foundation of Kansas. How does your residential zone accommodate the needs of the high, medium, and low-income families? Well, the high-income um, families, most of their houses are over by the lake because it's more desired to be by the lake when you're in Jewel. Um, there's also, in the center, um, there are a lot more um, high residential um, housing because most people want to be right in the center of the everything and um, be able to have access to many different places. Um, some of the lower residential um, areas are next to the regenerative thermal oxidizers and over by the mountain in the kind of the corner. Um, and these can accommodate everyone as well. And there are also apartments and condos um, for whatever type of living you want to have. Gary Clark with Kansas State University. In addition to environmental concerns, what other issues did you research and or analyze before deciding upon your alternative energy solution? Um, we wanted to have the most efficient uh, alternative energy sources. And um, since uh, Joule, Wyoming is ranked number nine in the United States for the amount of solar radiation, we wanted uh, mainly solar power, and since, it had, and since it also had a high elevation, it would most likely be in the year. So we put uh, sell some wind turbines. It is also windier over water. Jim Kowatch, Kansas Department of Transportation. Please describe a feature of your city that represents a future technology or capability that does not exist today. Well, the IntelliTube is definitely very futuristic. It is um, a clear tube that uses high air pressurization to push along large pods that can hold up to 30 people. They're still being worked out today, but in Juul, there are emergency um, evacuation um, passageways, and it's just very efficient and new. And another thing is um, the underground air caverns. They um, pressurize the air or they pressurize the energy produced from solar energy and keep it for a day when there is no solar energy available. They um, store it for later usage, and that is very um, futuristic. It can be used virtually anywhere. Craig Connell with Black and Beach. What are the risks involved in the use of your alternative energy source? Well, our, our alternative energy sources, um, being far out of the water, this is a representation. Um, nobody really goes out that far without being in a boat, and they're so high up that 
that they don't present much danger. And only experienced professionals and technicians are allowed to go into the compressed air caverns. So virtually no one is going in. Joel was from uh, Trail Ridge Middle School in Lenexa, Kansas, so thank you guys very much.